Bardock, father of Goku and Raditz, husband of Gine, the scientist, the one who tried to change the future, the man who stood against the tyrant Frieza. Bardock is one of the most well-liked characters that does not have much to his story, which is interesting because he is some people's top 5 character in all of Dragon Ball Z with some ranking him even higher. Now you may be asking, Bugsy, why are you talking about Bardock? What is the relevance of all of this? Well simply put, there are many people who do not like Bardock and do not like his involvement in the Dragon Ball Super manga during the granola arc. And most importantly, many people believe Bardock is not important to the story, yet Grandpa Gohan deserves to be brought back. I'm here to tell you why Bardock is important to the story and why he is one of the most misunderstood characters in the entire anime. Sit back, relax, grab your snacks, put on your headphones, and hear why Bardock is important to the Dragon Ball story. The first time we've seen Bardock was during the first episode in Dragon Ball Z where he ended up fighting Frieza and losing. We see a swole Saiyan with blood showing, beating up henchmen, and with the legendary red bandana. No information about him, but saw someone who didn't fear a tyrant. Then the next time we hear about Bardock was when Frieza saw Goku for the first time and noticed the striking resemblance between him and Bardock. Cue to another flashback where we see Barra talking to Frieza, holding his rebellion spear before throwing it at him. Then, well, we never hear about Bardock again until we get to the Dragon Ball Super manga. Yes, we did have the Bardock special, which did add more to his character. During the special, Bardock receives premonitions about the end of the Saiyan race. Bardock in this timeline is a scientist and considered one of the smartest and strongest Saiyans even though he is still considered a low-class warrior. While on a mission with his squad, they get ambushed and the last survivor is Bardock. Filled with rage and hatred towards Frieza, he dips his bandana in the blood of his comrades and wraps it around his head to remember them. Mind you, when he went back to Planet Vegeta, he tried to warn the Saiyans about Frieza going to destroy Planet Vegeta and trying to mobilize them to fight back. However, again, it seemed like people thought that Bardock was just insane and Bardock just was not making any sense. Therefore, it led to the infamous standoff with Lord Frieza. Within an hour, Bardock became legendary. So yeah, I can understand why people really enjoy Bardock as a character. However, I think where Bardock shines again is in the Dragon Ball Super manga during the Granola arc. During the Granola arc, we are presented with flashbacks of the Saiyans invading planet Serial, and they are destroying everything in Saiyan fashion. Bardock finds a baby Granola and Muzili, instead of destroying both of them, he decides to keep them alive. Which is a surprise because Muzili and Minato, because she knows Saiyans as monsters who destroy everything. When asked why he did not destroy them, he says, I just felt like it, that's all. In a chapter, Goku even says, I wish I knew a darn thing about my dad, but I can't say that I do, leading to Vegeta saying that his soft-hearted nature is in the family. Mind you, Goku didn't know who his father was. All he knew was that his Saiyan heritage was his name being Kakarot, Vegeta being the prince of all Saiyans, his brother Raditz, and quite frankly that was it in the course of discovery of Broly once they met during the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. We even see Bardock did try to save Mazzilli, Minato, and Granola, but the heater ended up killing Mazzilli and we see the regret in Bardock. Bardock ends up fighting Gas and was given the opportunity to return to Planet Vegeta by Minato as he did summon the Dragon Balls. However, he refused. As he says, a Saiyan would rather die than run from an enemy. When given the opportunity to make a wish, he does not make it for himself, but for his sons. He says, I'd wish that my sons end up thriving. After getting what appears to be a Zenkai boost, again, I'm saying it appears to be a Zenkai boost, but again, it's not 100% certain that it was. He says to Gas, in a life and death battle, what sort of idiot would think about anything else besides a victory? I fight when there's an enemy I want to beat down. Nothing more to it. This might be one of the hardest and underrated lines or quotes in Dragon Ball. This is very important because this allowed Goku 
to go even further and remember the essence of being a Saiyan warrior. Interestingly, it also reminded Vegeta what it meant to be a Saiyan. For Vegeta, it wasn't about his burdens being the sin of all the Saiyans, but for his people's pride. Most importantly, this allowed Goku to remember Bardock and Gine, which we saw in Chapter 84. To expand on that, throughout Dragon Ball Super and even through Dragon Ball Z, Bardock was not mentioned at all. Goku did not have an interest into learning about the Saiyan history or what really made him special. Goku has always considered himself to be an earthly, never a Saiyan. Once introduced to Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz, that is when he realized that he was much more than just an earthly. And after hearing everything that his father did, I believe this allowed Goku to have a profound respect for his father because again, Bardock was what we would consider to be the epitome of a Saiyan warrior. It wasn't about being the strongest. It wasn't about achieving all of these different transformations. It was simply that if there's an enemy he wants to fight, he's going to fight them. Nothing more, nothing less. And I think this is really impactful for Vegeta because Vegeta always considered Bardock to be this low class warrior. And quite frankly, somebody it seems like he would have never respected on any given day of the week. But somehow, some way, Bardock was able to get into Vegeta's mind and allow him to remember what it is all about. It's about the pride of the Saiyan race, something that Vegeta has always been preaching about. But once he no longer became that callous man he used to be, he decided to take on the sins of all of the Saiyans for all the errors that the Saiyans have made in the past, all the worlds they conquered, all the people they killed. But of course, Bardock was the one who ended up changing Vegeta's mindset. And I think it's very important that because of all of this, Goku started to have memories of Bardock and Gine. And we've never saw that until chapter 84 in Dragon Ball Super manga. Anyways, let's continue on with the video about why Bardock is the most misunderstood character in Dragon Ball Z. Gas seeing Goku brought back instant chills, which shows you that Bardock was truly a frightening warrior. We see that Goku makes very similar poses as Bardock and even has the similar facial expressions as Bardock, which again brought fear into Gaz. The lessons learned from Bardock even convinced Vegeta and Goku to fight side by side. But let's remember, Bardock is not an important character to the story, allegedly. Side note, it is absolutely dope that Vegeta, even at his last standing moments, was able to scare Gas with his final attack even though he passed out right before impact. Vegeta has always instilled fear in his enemies. Also, every enemy that has fought Bardock has said that there is no way he is a low class warrior. And again, I'm not sure what the ideology of a low class warrior is. However, Bardock has always been thrown into that ranking of being a low class warrior, but every villain that he has fought, every enemy that he has fought has showed that was not the case about Bardock. Bardock single-handedly took on Frieza's army and got through so many of Frieza's men that he got to the ship himself before being bombarded with almost tens of twenties of different soldiers in the Frieza army. Bardock, a character who has been considered invaluable to Goku and the story of Dragon Ball Z is completely incorrect. I believe Bardock should get a small moment to come back to life and meet Goku and even Vegeta. I do not think it really matters if he meets his grandchildren as they do not know he exists. Which I think is a very interesting detail how Gohan, Goten, pretty much everybody outside of Goku and Vegeta do not know who Bardock is. So they have no idea who their grandfather is or even who their grandmother is. But a small moment between the two pure-blooded Saiyans I think would be really dope. Even if it's just giving a small motivational speech against a strong warrior, maybe against Frieza whenever the two, or I guess those three, have their rematch. No, I do not believe that Bardock should come back and defeat any warrior since he would have been 40 years behind when it comes to strength, transformations, etc. This is not Dragon Ball superheroes where he has Super Saiyan 4, Super Saiyan 3, etc, etc. He would simply be there as a motivational factor. Or who knows? Bardock and Gine meeting Goku 
would be really cool to see and that could be the conclusion of Bardock within the story of Dragon Ball Super. I hope you guys do enjoy the video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think Bardock should have a short appearance in the Dragon Ball Super anime and if you think he is much more complete than given off. If you have made it this far in the video, comment Bugs and Bees and who knows, I might give 5 people who comment a membership to the YouTube channel. It has been your boy Bugsy. Make sure to please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help the channel even more, make sure to click that join button or become a member on Patreon. Have a great day. And remember, don't get mad. Think of the booty. Peace out.